the simple way we do these studies in the lab doesn't account for the complexities of people. So a simple system that we use in the lab is we take cells, we add the drug, we add the virus, and we measure infection. But the human body is not simply a petri dish of cells. So when one thinks about protecting a woman, as an example, from an infection like HIV that gets into the genital tract, one has to remember her genital tract has normal, healthy bacteria that live in your genital tract and help protect you, actually, from infection. It has vaginal fluid, which is rich in proteins and other products from cells that also are there to help protect us. And if she has sex, which is how she gets exposed oftentimes to these viruses, there's semen that's in that genital tract. And all of those things might change not only the way the drug works, but the way the virus can infect cells. Some of the drugs, the first phase drugs that were used to protect against HIV and the herpes virus worked beautifully in the lab. And those drugs were further developed, they were formulated into vaginal gels, and they were tested in thousands of women. And they didn't work. And so our lab began to ask, well, why would that be the case? Why would these drugs that looked so good inside the laboratory fail to work when we put them in humans? So we went back into the lab and we said, let's simulate what's really happening in people. And lo and behold, we found that we took those same drugs and we put cells on a dish, we added the drug, but this time, instead of adding the virus in a typical buffer that you use in a laboratory, we added the virus, but we mixed the virus with human semen. And all of a sudden, we saw that the drug didn't work as well. So normally, we would fill a dish with cells, and then we would add virus. And what would happen is the virus would come along and it would try to attach itself onto one of these cells. And once it's attached, it would then enter the cells. Now, the way the drug works, here's our little drug, is it actually binds itself to the virus and prevents the virus from binding to the cell. And that's how we tested these drugs in the laboratory for their activity against both the HIV virus and the herpes virus and they work beautifully. But this is what happened when we began making the system a little more realistic and a little bit more complicated. This time, we first mixed our virus just the same way it would be with a person with semen. And when you do that, now our viral particle ends up being kind of cloaked. These are my pretend cloaks. These are proteins from the semen. This cloak prevented the drug from seeing the virus. And now, the virus could actually go ahead and bind to the cell and ultimately infect the cell. And so that kind of work has really redesigned the way we think about drugs. And as we move forward to the next generation of candidate drugs to protect women, we are now making sure that they first get tested with semen in different kinds of culture conditions so that we can know whether or not they work in the presence of semen, whether they work in the presence of vaginal fluid, whether they work when we change the vaginal microbiome, and those kinds of more sophisticated approaches to early testing before we roll a drug out and test it in thousands of women. And I think those are very important things that will help us get to something that's really going to work to protect women from HIV and HSV. We're also trying to develop a vaccine that will protect women and men and children, ideally children actually, from the genital herpes virus and from the oral herpes virus. So we've begun a collaboration with Bill Jacobs, another investigator here at Einstein, to develop a vaccine against the herpes virus. We have some very exciting preliminary data. So are we hoping that we are gonna be able to successfully make a vaccine that's gonna protect against these viruses that persist and are very prevalent throughout the world. I think the most exciting part of my job is the fact that I can see patients, ask questions, come back into the lab and try to answer some of those questions but then take some of those answers and go back into the patient. So it's very exciting to be able to be on both sides of the fence, to be both taking care of patients and answering questions in the laboratory. And I think it's a wonderful career choice to be able to do that kind of work.